All right, you're here to decide if you want to buy a Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol. I'm here to tell you why I'm a little bit disappointed in it, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a do not buy. It's just to think about it before you buy. Quick housekeeping, I haven't made a video in forever, so sorry if this sucks. Either way, to kick off, uh, where the underwhelming piece started was I started off with 25 rounds of slugs. And during that 25 rounds, this barrel clamp, which used to sit right here, started walking forward. I had checked that the screws were tight before, but there's no torque spec listed in Beretta's manual. So I just kind of got them to a hand tight, comfortable level where I didn't feel like I was gonna pull through what, what feels like a very cheap and plastic part. Apparently I didn't get them tight enough because I had kind of zeroed them on the edge of these sipes here so that I would have a repeatable place when I took this off because you have to take it off if you're gonna clean the gun. Uh, another piece of frustrating design here, but you can see where the barrel's marred. This is slid all the way forward to here. That's how I knew something was going on. It did stop here, but in that 25 rounds, it already marred the finish this bad. So it just got me feeling like, first off, this is a cheap, crappy piece. Um, why did you do that? And then second off, the finish on this is not great. If just 25 rounds of, of plastic sliding has already done that to the finish. How is this gonna hold up over time? How's my rust protection gonna be? How's this gun gonna look sleek and sexy like everybody wants? Uh, so the piece is plastic. It's got some metal inserts for your QD cups there. It's also got metal inserts on one side and plastic threading on the other. So it'll go through the plastic threads and into the metal threads on the opposite side of each. But what happened when I went back and tried to tighten it down thinking it was my mistake was I actually pulled these metal cups up and out of the plastic. And you can kind of see the raised rim there of each where the plastic pulled through and I've since shoved them back down. Trying to contact Beretta, I was like, hey, can you shoot the gun without the use of the barrel clamp? I was thinking, you know, is this too weak? Is there flex here? Is it gonna get damaged? I don't know what kind of forces are on the gun during recoil. For First, their chat system was down. They responded to one email, not answering my question, wanting to know my like name, address, and serial number. And I'm not about that. I was like, listen, I'm not trying to warranty the gun. I'm not trying to send it back into you. I just want to know, is it okay to take this piece off? Yes or no? Crickets. Sent a follow-up email. Hey, it's been three or four days. I just wanted to check if you guys were still working on it. No response again. Followed up a third time. Hey, I'm getting a little frustrated. I feel like this is a relatively simple question. Can you please advise if I can take this off or not? Still no response. I think it was two, three, or four emails that they just completely ignored ignored before I went back again and tried the chat system, finally got through to somebody who was like, oh yeah, we saw your email. Um, let me look into that for you. And then comes back and says, well, it's necessary to keep clamp on the magazine extension tube so it doesn't come unscrewed. By the way, could you send us pictures of what's going on? And I was like, why do you need um, pictures? Are, are, are you willing to send me another one of these clamps and maybe advise proper torque specs for it? I would love that. Completely ignored the part about send me another clamp, completely ignored the part about torque specs. They were just like, well, you know, this is a new gun that's under development. So we'd really like to like to have feedback from customers on how it's going. I pay the upfront money and then I do their research for them so that they can update the product and rolling updates. I, I just think that's a crappy model. You should treat your customer better than that. Also, the A300 system has been around for a pretty significant amount of time compared to the A300 Patrol. So they should have a lot of this stuff squared away. What I ended up doing in the end, if you can see through there, is I put a witness mark so I can watch and see if, if the tube starts to rotate off or not. But I'm not going to continue to screw up my barrel with that. Uh, crappy barrel clamp. So other pieces of the review are actually going to start butt to tip. Immediately on receipt, the, the stock is cheap, hollow plastic. Sorry, I'm not in the frame there again. Not filming too often anymore. I don't know if you can hear that. There's flex. This thing is, it's not inspiring confidence. I'll get to it later, but this, I believe, is where the rear QD or sling mount would be installed. But I'm afraid to take that out because I don't know if it would go back together. And this feels so weak. I don't want any potentially breaking this. And the reason that's so concerning is because this design is essentially using the Browning A5 from the end of the 1800s. It's very old hat. And one of the reasons that it's not particularly used anymore, well, used as frequently, is you can see there's a tail section to the bolt here. This has already been safety checked. And that tail section is being pushed by a spring that's in the handle here. When I pull that back, that tail and compressed spring has all gone down into this handle. That means that there's no good way to change this buttstock and that you're going to be limited even if they do come out with aftermarket stuff later and what you can do because you're always going to have to house that spring. Very similar to like an AR buffer tube situation, right? Like you could have put the recoil spring up front here like many other guns do, but instead you chose to put it in the back. Additionally, it uses the exact same locking system where you can see there's some free play in this bolt handle before the bolt body actually starts to move forward and backward. And what that's doing is 
because it's pushing a locking block up that's going to lock into the barrel extension and on the first bit of recoil it's going to pull that lock down and then it's going to retract and cycle so kind of a use of an old system there and the reason i gripe about that is one that piece is kind of annoying and two they didn't put any r&d into this it shouldn't have been very expensive for them to develop or work on i would really expect more of a discount from them given how little research probably went into the design working components of this similarly i'll get to it later in the teardown but the trigger mechanism is basically the same as my Franke from 2008 2009 ish the trigger looks almost exactly the same they will have moved this bar from the left side to the right side maybe a few other geometry differences obviously this red button's been moved to the front on the a300 the safety's been moved forward but otherwise all these operating components you're going to see they look almost exactly the same so again little to no r&d development Franke was like a step down from benelli which i think is a step down from beretta as far as they're concerned but it's one of their lower tier cheaper triggers that they did not have to develop for this conversely i will say the checkering on this gun is really aggressive and it's not in that like oh it's just a thing to comment on kind of way like it's actually sharp the first day when i was shooting this with slugs i put on gloves because I was like, it's going to tear up my hands too bad with how sharp it is. And I think that's actually a good thing. This is going to get a little bit duller comparatively over time, but it's starting from such a sharp point. I think the, you're actually getting good purchase from this. The other thing is it's nice that they include this Velcro section for your detachable side saddles, but I think this is an additional cost that, that wasn't needed. Every little side saddle pack that I found online comes with Velcro. And I don't think it's really that difficult to make cutouts for, for two pens. Anybody's got scissors, you can literally just do that yourself. There's there's no need. Uh, this is a totally separate supply chain for them. They make receivers, they make stocks, they make barrels, they make all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure how much they make Velcro. And if I remember right, this may have been sourced from 3M. So I, I'm not sure they're able to pass along like an economy of scale savings to you as much as you might be able to benefit from just, you're getting that Velcro anyways every time you purchase some saddles. Up top here, I was also disappointed. Love the ghost ring sights. The aperture I think could have been a little bit tighter. It's not terrible and there's a screw here so you can change it out. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing any way that you can adjust this for windage or elevation and same on the front sight. So you've got nice sights, but you've got no way to adjust them. The other thing I noticed that was like a little bit of a bummer just because I think it would have been an easy win for them is that the distance between these two screws for the rear sight is different than the distance between the two screws for the Picatinny rail. My red dot blocks this rear sight anyways. I was thinking it would be nice at least to have the option. I'm not saying everybody wants to do it this way, but to take that rear sight off, move the pick rail back and, and have those two be interchangeable. But that is not something they elected to do. Possibly they had a reason for it. I'm not sure. Of course, as we're all familiar with, the, the big selling points of this are the uh, extended bolt handle there, which is very three gun ask, and the extended shell lifter release. I'm blanking on my terms. It's weird being on camera. This works great. Super easy to get to too. It's super intuitive. I don't notice a huge difference with this, but um, I didn't really fire it under stress. The trigger, I, I do think one thing I liked about it was that they moved the safety from back here behind the trigger to in front of the trigger. I find this much more intuitive. If you're about to shoot, your finger is going to be out there. It's not going to be weirdly curled back here, making you kind of break your grip off the gun to reach it, just depending on your hand size. I like that. I think I heard some people complain about it, but that's great. You cannot put the gun on safe when the hammer is down. The hammer has to be cocked in order for you to put it on safe. I don't think that's a huge deal, but I do like the feature of just always being able to put it on safe. And again, I know I keep comparing to this rather obscure gun, but uh, that's something my Franke can do. And it's a much cheaper, much older, discontinued, unsuccessful gun. And it has that feature. Also, I, I do need to, again, praise and, and overpraise. I don't know why so many guns still put the safety back here. I think this is so obviously a better way putting it in front of the trigger that uh, every gun should do this always. One thing I don't like is this curvature of this trigger makes it such that when you are pulling the trigger, it's hinging upward. So it feels as you're pulling the trigger like your finger is sliding down along it. It's just a small gripe, but I, it's not for me. Um, I wish they would have come up with a more straight trigger or at least fix that angle. It's nice. I've got the number somewhere. I'll, I'll put it in here. I believe it's like a it's five pound, four ounce trigger is what I got off my scale. So uh, we can check reset. Got to come out a little ways and it's a little bit 
gritty and, and slidier. I actually think the Franke trigger I have is nicer than this one. Although that might be because it's just an older gun and I fired a lot more rounds through it. To date on this, we've got 25 slugs and 200 bird shot uh, shooting some clays. So it's not your super tough intensive testing. It's just something to give you a first look. The recessed charging port is nice. They made a big to-do about how much material they got out of here. And I, I do find it pretty easy to load. Also, you'll find, especially if you're doing sporting clays and you're not going the full tactical max out rounds route, because it's such a long spring in here, it's, it's actually fairly easy to load those first several rounds. The front end does feel nice and sturdy, although you'll see in other parts of me gripe about the type of cheap plastic it is. Your gas piston is gonna have to run through this spacer sleeve. And the spacer sleeve, as you can hear, is made of the same cheap plastic with little force at all. I'm flexing it there, I'm flexing it here. The whole thing's been cut away. You hear a lot of talk about single action bar versus dual action bar. Well, we only get the one, it's single, uh, which means that on some level, we're not gonna be imparting a perfectly even front to back force, right? We're gonna be torquing off to one side because we're only connected on one side. So again, the handguard, we get that same kind of plastic. So you can see right here where the gas has burned it. The way the system works is this gas piston is going to push out and reciprocate so you can reload. And then once the gas piston has pushed as far as it can that direction, all the excess gas is gonna push the spring back and it's gonna vent out this way. So that venting, I'm trying to remember where this lands. I think it's about here. So yeah, actually that lines up perfectly. You can see where it's been burned into the plastic there. I didn't notice any heat while shooting. Of course, I'm not doing any like major mag dumps. I'm, I'm just shooting clays. So it's not more than a couple at a time or maybe like six shots in a minute. But already after just 200 rounds, this has a permanent mark in it. I assume it's not gonna get too much worse, but it's just, uh, I don't know. I, I just have to like question the design and the thought behind it. It doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. I know I keep saying that, but if this is something that, that a cop is going to bet his life on, not impressive. Again, with that really nice texturing up front, you got M-lock slots at the three, six, and nine positions, which also leads back to a bit of my gripe with the barrel clamp is that, yeah, it's got some extra M-lock here, but I'm not sure how many more M-lock slots you are really going to need. I don't know how much people are tacking out their shotguns and what all you can put up here. I'm over six foot and this length of pull is too much for me to want to put a vertical grip up here. Um, I would imagine with a, a light that extends backwards with a tail cap or something, you could activate that no problem. I don't know how much further forward you'd want to start mounting things. And similarly, that's a, a bit of a gripe with these cups is that I believe they come mounted way out here. I don't find it comfortable to run the sling that far out. I would be wanting to bring it all the way back in. And again, I'm over six foot. So if you're somebody who's shorter, I think this might be too far out for you. We already talked about the mag tube. And uh, again, I had to put that witness mark on there because they're going to warn you that this can walk off without use of the barrel clamp. But I, I would suggest not using it, not just because it, it mars up your barrel. You may not care about that, but because it's plastic and cheap and crappy. And if, if it ever comes down to it and you're putting a lot of strain on that, I don't know if it if it might break on you. And a thing you definitely don't want breaking as your sling. One thing you will notice um, here is that I've got the extended choke tubes in. I think this is a big win. I think it's a real cheap out on a lot of other shotguns. I understand they're tactical or whatever, but you should always include choke tubes in here. That can be very helpful with buckshot. It actually can be helpful with some slugs, choking at least up to an improved cylinder. Certainly if you want to use it for other applications like shooting sporting clays, this allows you to practice with your tactical shotgun a lot better than you would on a flat range. And I know many flat ranges will tell you, you may not shoot shotguns in. They do have a nice fiber optic front sight up here and this screw that seems to imply uh, there's ways to change it out if it ever has problems on down the road so that's a nice option too. If you're questioning using this gun for shooting clays I did chronograph it and the difference between this 19 and a half inch barrel and my Franke's 28 inch barrel was only seven percent slower on this barrel with slugs and four percent slower with birdshot. I would say you're only losing you know let's just call it five percent and it's not really noticeable uh, unless you're somebody that's just a, a pro shooter and is shooting straight hundreds and skeet and stuff. Uh, it's perfectly fine to shoot this. You may get some looks out of those ranges. There's a lot of thud, double barrel break action people that are very scared by something that looks like this and, and think you're ridiculous for using it. Uh, the times I've gone, I was certainly the only person out there using an optic, but uh, why not? It's a great time. One more criticism I have of keeping the mag clamp on here is that every time you clean it, you're gonna have to remove the mag clamp 
so you can remove the extension tube, so you can remove the forehand, so you can remove the spacer. Everything in this gun is dependent on everything else. It It is truly a system. Nothing is modular or siloed. So if you want to clean, hey, I guess you can take out the trigger by itself. Everything else has to go in together. Tail hook has to mate with the spring cup. Bolt has to be on the carrier, and that has to be plugged into the extension all at the same time as it's inserted. Barrel has to be with this plastic spacer at the same time as it, it's inserted. And then I guess you can do the flare end and the barrel clamp separately. All that to say, I found it a frustrating gun to work on. It's it's not super intuitive. Any, anybody can figure it out with, you know, five or 10 minutes, but it's not like immediately obvious. Oh, that's what you do. It might take doing it wrong one time before you figure out and get it all back together. I think that's going to encourage people not to clean the gun as much as they otherwise might. Somebody like me, I like to clean it after every time I go to the range, not because I think that's necessary, but because I find it's easier to clean when that carbon is still caught in the lube. I like to really over lube my guns. You can just wipe it off then, but if it gets dry and hard and it cakes on there, you're having to use a brass brush or a bronze scraper or some kind of other tool and it gets way harder on you. So overall, I think it's a perfectly good option for you. It does come in, I believe, cheaper than some of the Mossberg 940 options that are, that are similar. It's certainly cheaper than the Beretta 1301. I don't think the operating system being slower than the Blink system is much of a drawback, but I think Beretta certainly recognizes that this is one of their budget offerings and they really treat it accordingly. So I've been super underwhelmed. I, I was expecting a premium product at a mid-tier price and instead I got a I got a mid-tier product at a mid-tier price. So not the end of the world, but I really expected more of Beretta, especially their customer service was super disappointing. It's still a great gun. I'm still going to enjoy it. I'm not going to sell it. Hope this was helpful in some way. Take care.